These are the notes on quadratic functions. Um, in this module, we've looked at two, we've looked at finding equations for quadratic functions, both in the recursive and the explicit. Generally speaking, when we're doing the recursive, we're looking at a table, or we're looking at a pattern in which we've made a table. So remember that quadratic functions um, have a rate of growth that is linear, or the second difference is constant. So let's look at an example of that in this lovely table right here. So um, I am going to find the first and second differences here. I'm just going to grab a calculator to make these calculations a little bit easier. Um, I know that to go from 7 to 28, I'm adding 21. Um, in order to go from 28 to 63, I'm adding 35. Go from 112 to, sorry, 63 to 112, I'm adding 49. 112 to 175, I'm adding 63. And 175 to 252, I'm adding 77. So we label this as our first difference. I want to also find our second difference. And that's what I get by looking to see how I get from 21 to 35. And I get that by adding 14. Turns out that that also is 14. And that is 14. And that is 14. So if I looked just at this portion of the table, I would say that this pattern, this pattern right here is constant. And this pattern right here is linear. So that's what it means when we talk about the rate of growth being linear and the second difference being constant. So now I need to write the recursive equation. Um, remember, the recursive talks about what I'm doing from one term to get the next. So the first part of the recursive equations is that we always write our initial term, so f of 1 equals 7. The second part of our recursive is to say f of x equals the previous term, f of x minus 1, and then I need to tell what I'm doing each time. So I'm not adding 14 each time, because if I were, that would be this column. That would be the, the initial first difference. I'm actually adding a linear equation. So I'm like adding an, uh, a line, a y equals mx plus b portion here. And so I have to determine what that is. Now, there are several ways to do that. The first step that I like to use is the fact that this constant difference, the second difference, constant is my slope. That's my slope. So I can already write plus 14x. And then I have to determine the y-intercept part. And again, lots of different ways to do that. So one way is to say, well, if I look at this line right here, I can see that for my linear part, linear part, which is what I'm writing right here, when I plug the number 2 in, I get 21. So let's look at this linear piece right here. Let's do some little side work. So I know that my equation, my linear piece, is an mx plus b, and in this case I know my m, it's 14. And I'm really hoping to find my b. Well, when I look at this line here, I can see that if I plug in 2 for the linear portion, I should get to the answer being 21. That's what this means to be the linear portion. I'm looking at the linear, the first difference, and I'm finding that equation, the equation for this portion, the first difference. So it's almost as if I've covered up the 
part of the table that I'm my, my goal in the end. And I'm now creating a new table where I'm looking at the pattern as, as if it's just a linear pattern. And then I can solve this. So I have 21 equals 28 plus B. I get negative 7 equals B, which means that that's my B. So again, this is MX plus B for the linear portion. So I'm now making an equation out here that is a linear equation, which is why I used a linear equation to find my, my B value. Let's look at a second example. Oh, sorry, let me go back really quickly. So your final answer here, the answer that you are going to write in order to get your, your, your full credit is this right here. Um, however, showing this work is a great way to communicate to anyone who's reading your work that you really do understand what is happening in terms of this first difference being a linear relationship. Let's look at a second example. Again, we're still looking at a table. We're still talking about the recursive. So I can start right away by just saying, OK, I know that my first term, in this case, f of negative 1 equals negative 8. And I know the pattern here is always f of x equals f of x minus 1. Um, my, new, my current term is my previous. And then I have to do something to that previous. So I'm going to again set this up where I have my first difference and my second difference. So to go from negative 8 to negative 9, I subtracted 1. Negative 9 to positive 8, I added 1. Negative 8 to positive to negative 5, I added 3. Negative 5 to 0, I added 5. And 0 to 7, I added 7. So to get my second difference, I look at those two numbers, and I've added 2, added 2, added 2, added 2. So again, because this is a constant difference, that means that 1 over is a linear difference which means 1 over is a quadratic difference. That's the relationship there. So what I'm going to add here is a linear relationship. So I am adding a linear relationship. And you'll remember linear relationships are y equals mx plus b. The constant is my m, so I can plug that in. I then have to define my b. And again, we're going to do this exact thing where um, we're going to pick a line here. And I picked this one very strategically this time because it turns out that if I'm looking at the x being 0 and the y being negative 1, the x being 0 means that the y is the y-intercept. It is the b. So that I can actually go straight to the linear without having to plug anything in. So y equals 2x minus 1. So now I'm going to finish writing my final answer. f of x equals f of x minus 1 plus my linear. So plus 2x minus 1. The second way we've looked at these equations is uh, to find the explicit. Um, and when we've done that, at least in this chapter, we've really only looked at tile patterns. We haven't done the explicit from a table. Uh, and that will be what will be covered in, in this module. You won't come back and, and do uh, the explicit for a table. So um, when I'm looking at a tile pattern, one really great strategy is to look at area and look at rectangles. So in this first pattern, it turns out that my shapes are already rectangles. And so I have less work to do actually in this one. So I'm just going to write the, I'm going to write the dimensions of each of these rectangles because that may help me start to see the pattern. 
So the dimensions here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, I'm beginning to see a pattern. I'm hoping that this up here is 6, so let's check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is indeed going up by 1 here. I'm really hoping that this length here is 7, because I'm also going up by 1 on that length. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It is. So I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing that each time I go from the, to the next figure, I'm adding 1 on one of the dimensions, and on the other, I'm also adding 1 to that dimension. Now, I can write a recursive sort of from that. But what I'm really interested in is writing the explicit. And so to write the explicit, I have to somehow see a pattern between the figure number, so 1, and these two numbers. So what I see is that in order to go from 1 to 3, I add 2. So x plus 2. And in order to go from 1 to 4, I add 3. Now, that's what happens in the first one. And if, in order for me to be right and find the area, get the explicit, that needs to be true for all of the next three. So figure two, to go from two to four, I add two. To go from two to five, I add three. To go from three to five, I add two. Three to six, I add three. Four to six, I add two. 4 to 7, I add 3. So it is the same. The top number is x plus 2. It's whatever the figure number is plus 2 more each and every time. And it is the same for the, the, the width or the length. It's, it's every time I need to take my figure number and add 3 to get the number of tiles there. So now I rely on the fact that I can also find the area for all three of the, all four of these. Um, and I find area, so remember that the area of a rectangle equals length times width. And so I could find them for the specific. I could find that this is 12 and 20 and 30 and 42. But I want to use the variables. So then I would say that my length and width are x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now, you can leave this equation exactly as it is. This is the equation for, the, the explicit equation for this pattern. Um, in a second video, we will talk about the fact that you can multiply this out. Um, and I am going to do that without necessarily doing a great explanation at this point, except to say, whoops, typo, except to say that you're using the property of distribution. Um, and you'll need to watch the other video if this is not, uh, if distribution is not something you're familiar with. And then I end just by saying f of x because it is an equation. I'm not just dealing with, I'm dealing with the area of a rectangle, but in relation to, to a figure number and a number of tiles, so an, an x and a y or an x and a y squared, and a f of x. Let's look at a second example of these. The second example, um, in this case, I don't have just a straight up rectangle anymore. I've got a slightly different shape. So um, I need to kind of take a minute here and figure out if I, can, if I should rearrange my tiles so that I end up with a rectangle somehow, or if there's a hidden rectangle um, already in there. And it turns out that the way I see this pattern, and it may not be the way you see it, is that there's some hidden rectangles. Here's a rectangle, here's a rectangle, here's a rectangle, and here's a rectangle. And that each time, whatever rectangle I have, I add one. Um, which actually means that, the, the con that there's no difference between these. I'm not changing what I'm adding. It literally is going to be that I have um, f of x equals two things being multiplied, rectangle, plus one. That's it. So now I need to find the area 
of my rectangle. So to do that, I'm going to do exactly what I did before. I'm going to label these rectangles. This rectangle is a 1 by 3. This is a 2 by 4. This one is a 3 by 5. And this one is a 4 by 6. So now I have to see if I can somehow relate these numbers to the figure numbers. So when I'm looking at the, the height, the width, the length, whatever you want to call it, the, the vertical portion, I can actually see that the figure numbers match up. So 1 is 1, and 2 is 2, and 3 is 3, and 4 is 4, which means that this dimension each and every time is simply an x. So now I'm going to look at the horizontal dimension, and in order to go from 1 to 3, I have to add 2. 2 to 4, I also have to add 2. 3 to 5, also have to add 2. 4 to 6, also have to add 2. Which now means that I have the right pattern here. So now I can write the area of my rectangle. Remember, that's length times width. And so that is x times x plus 2. But then I still have this lovely plus 1 on the end. And then I can always clean this up a bit by using distribution. So x times x and x times 2, and then I still have my plus 1. And that is the explicit equation for this tile pattern.